Bonjour, bienvenue. So hello and welcome to this week's edition of Community French. Uh, every Monday, every lundi at 12 p.m. Um, so this is our second week today and I'm bringing you another lesson having to do with another uh, basic but really important irregular verb. Uh, last week we took a look at the verbs être, to be, and avoir, to have. In today's focus we're going to look at the verb faire, meaning to do or to make. So this verb is super useful and students of all levels will find, will find this lesson helpful. Everyone needs to use faire. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner student or an advanced student. It's really all over the French language. So it's a super important verb to learn. Um, and unfortunately, it's irregular like our other two verbs, meaning it doesn't follow the regular patterns. So we have to learn it kind of specifically. And so we're, today we're going to be taking a look not only at the different forms of the verb faire, but also about a bunch of the useful everyday expressions that go with it that will come in handy when you're speaking French. So um, I'm going to uh, share my screen so hopefully everyone can see the text well. Um, we have here the verb faire again means to do or to make. Uh, so first we're going to look at again the conjugations of this verb meaning the different forms of the verb and so we need to learn these specifically because they are unique and they're different than all the other regular verbs um, and even not only in their uh, their form, but also the pronunciation is also a little bit unique. So we need to take a look at, at these two. So uh, first we have for, for je, for I, we have I do or I make is je fais, je fais. So please repeat with me so you can make sure you're getting the sounds right yourself. Je fais. Okay, next one we have for you do or you make, it's tu fais, tu fais. So it's just the same as je, okay? So we have je fais and tu fais, so I do and you do. You as in the uh, the informal, the uh, familiar you, tu, okay? Now for the third uh, the third row here, we have for il, which is he, elle, which is she, and on, which is literally one, but it's kind of like the French informal way of saying we, okay? So il, elle, and on, and those all use fais. Okay, so pronounced just the same as the first two. So, je fais, tu fais, il, elle, on, fait. Okay, so those, we have those on the left side, the singular one. Now, as we go to the right side, so we have the, the word for we, oui, which is nous, okay? So, we have nous, and this is where we get a, a little irregular on the pronunciation as well. So, um, we're going to pronounce this. I know it looks like faisons, but actually we're going to say faisons. So, nous faisons means we do or we make. Nous faisons. So please, please repeat with me. Nous faisons. Okay. So that's for we do or we make. Now for vous, which is either you polite uh, or you all, if you're speaking to a group of people, be vous. This is another one with a little bit of an irregular pronunciation. Again, it looks like fate, but we're going to say fait. So vous fait. Vous fait. Okay. You you do, either you polite do or you all do or you all make, okay? Then for the last one, for they, so we have il and elle. So if we're gonna say they do, if we again we use il, if it's an all, an all male group or a mixed group of both men and women, we use il, so that'd be il font, il font, okay? So for they do, they make. Now for uh, they, if it's an all female group, it's elle font. Elles font, okay? So they do they for all female groups. So again, one more time, we'll do these conjugations all together. Je fais, tu fais, ils, elles, ont fait, nous faisons, vous faites, and ils, elles, font. Okay, tu clair, all clear? Okay, so now let's see if we can answer some questions together first. And then I'm gonna speak more about some expressions and we're gonna get a lot more practice with this verb. So first question I have there, you can see just below the box. Qu'est-ce que vous faites aujourd'hui? So what do you do today? Qu'est-ce que vous faites aujourd'hui? So think, think about what you have planned for the day. See, and see if you can say that in French. Qu'est-ce que vous faites aujourd'hui? So for example, you can say, je travaille, I work. J'étudie, I study. Je cuisine, I cook. Okay, so we have 
some different options depending on what's on your uh, on your plate, as we say, for today. Okay. Now, next one, we have qu'est-ce que vos amis font aujourd'hui? Qu'est-ce que vos amis font aujourd'hui? So it means, what are your friends doing today? What do your friends do today? Okay, so now we have to talk about them. So not about like the first question, but we're going to talk about them. So we use either il or elle. So again, maybe you know what they're doing. If you don't know, you can invent something just to practice. So qu'est-ce que vos amis font aujourd'hui? What do your friends do today? Okay, now last one, we have something a little bit more creative and Megan, maybe we need to use our imagination if you, uh, this doesn't apply to you, but qu'est-ce que votre chat or votre chien fait aujourd'hui? What does your cat or what does your dog do today? Again, you can either, uh, if you don't have one, you can invent one, you can imagine it, but, or, but if you do, you can put yourself in the place of your animal. What, they, what do they do today? Qu'est-ce que votre chat or qu'est-ce que votre chien fait aujourd'hui? So, for example, we can say le chat mange, the cat eats, okay? Le chat dort, the cat sleeps, maybe, okay? So, we have some different, some different options depending on what your animal likes to do. So, that's our first pa practice with the verb faire, okay? Now, next, if we scroll down, I'm going to start introducing some expressions using faire, okay? So, so as I said before at the start, the verb faire does mean to do or to make, but we also use it in many expressions in French, like lots and lots and lots. And so here, I just have a summary of what I think are some of the most useful ones, uh, but there are tons more than just the ones I had pictured here. So I recommend that you take a look and see, uh, you know, search around if you need some more, we want to learn some more expressions. Um, there are tons to choose from. So first one we have is with the météo. Météo means the weather. Okay, so there are many weather expressions that use faire. Okay, so and you're pretty much always going to use it in this one, this uh, form of il fait. I know it literally means he does, but we it's kind of like the it that we use in English. So for example, we say il fait froid means it's cold. Okay, or il fait chaud, it's warm. Okay, um, il fait frais, it's cool. So they, most of the weather expressions, um, especially speaking about temperature, have used the verb faire. So that's a, a, a useful thing. So if we think about um, the météo aujourd'hui, today's weather, how is it? Comment est la météo? Think about what you might be able to say about today's weather. Est-ce qu'il fait froid? Is it cold? Est-ce qu'il fait chaud? Is it hot? I think we can say maybe il fait un peu chaud. Uh, it's a little a little warm, you know, for, for a springtime weather in Boston, it's a little warm, okay? So that's la météo, the weather, okay? Now, next one. Um, a lot of our kind of home tasks are things that use faire. So for, so for example, faire le ménage, it means to do like do the cleaning, okay? The, the, the general cleaning of your house, faire le ménage. So for example, I said, le samedi, je fais le ménage. So on Saturdays, I clean, I do the cleaning in the house. Le samedi, je fais le ménage. So now for you, quand est-ce que vous faites le ménage? Quand est-ce que vous faites le ménage? When do you do the cleaning of your house? So think, think about your answer and say it out loud if you can. So question was, quand est-ce que vous faites le ménage? So for me, it, it, this is true. Je, for, pour moi, le samedi, je, je fais le ménage. But maybe for you, it's on le dimanche or maybe le lundi. That could be any day. So that's le, the expression, faire le ménage, to do the cleaning. Now, next one we have is to do the dishes. Faire la vaisselle. Faire la vaisselle. Do the dishes. So I have the uh, example here. Ex example, mon frère, my brother, fait la vaisselle le soir dans la cuisine. Mon frère fait la vaisselle le soir dans la cuisine. So my brother does the dishes like each night, every night in the kitchen. Okay. So how about you? Est-ce que vous faites la vaisselle? Do you do the dishes? Est-ce que vous faites la vaisselle? So think about your answer. Is it oui or non? Maybe you're a person who never does the dishes. Okay, next one, we have faire la lessive. Faire la lessive, another uh, home task. This is to do the laundry this time. So again, la vaisselle is the dishes and la lessive is the laundry. 
So je fais la lessive chaque weekend. I do the laundry each weekend. Et vous? And you? Quand est-ce que vous faites la lessive? When do you do the dishes? Je fais la lessive le lundi, le samedi, maybe it's every day, uh, depends on what your habits are. So that's la lessive. Next one is faire les courses. Faire les courses. This is to do the shopping, like grocery shopping. Okay, faire les courses. So for example, mon ami fait les courses le vendredi. Mon ami fait les courses le vendredi. Okay. So my friend goes, does the grocery shopping on uh, Fridays. So my question for you is, où est-ce que vous faites les courses? Où est-ce que vous faites les courses? Where do you do your grocery shopping? Où est-ce que vous faites les courses? Okay, and the answer might be different for everyone. Okay, so those are some of our kind of home tasks. And again, there are many more tasks we can add to that that also use faire. Okay, but let's continue. So the next expression we have is faire la queue. Faire la queue is to wait in line, something we have to do often. So faire la queue. Okay, so for example, uh, for example, ils font la queue devant le magasin. So they do, uh, they, they wait in line. Like, and literally they make the line. They wait in line in front of the store. Ils font la queue devant le magasin. So my question for you is, où est-ce que vous faites la queue? Où est-ce que vous faites la queue? Where do you wait in line? It could be le banc, it could be le supermarché. There's many different places that you might faire la queue. Okay. All right, next one, we have faire attention, which means to, in English, to pay attention, literally in French, to make or do attention, faire attention, okay? So we have, uh, for example, il faut faire attention quand il pleut. So, like, it must or one must pay attention when it rains. So you get, basically, you have to pay attention, be careful, because it's slippery. So faire attention is to pay attention, okay? Okay. So to pay attention. Next one, we have a couple more uh, expressions to share before we get practicing more together. So next one, we have faire des économies. Faire des économies. This means to uh, save, like save money. Faire des économies. So for example, par exemple, nous faisons des économies pour acheter une maison. Okay, so we save money to buy a house. Nous faisons des économies pour acheter une maison, okay? So we save money to buy a house. And then my question for you is, est-ce que vous faites des économies? Are you saving for something? Est-ce que vous faites des économies? Oui ou non, okay? Okay, and then the last one on our list here, we have faire with the different types of activities, different types of activities. So um, we have the verb jouer to play, like, which we would use with sports. Uh, but when it's a kind of activity, then we use uh, we use the verb faire. So in my example, vous faites de la randonnée au printemps means you uh, go hiking. We would say in English to go hiking, but in, in French it's literally to do of the hiking, to make of the hiking. So it's in a kind of activity. It could be a sporty activity, but if it's not a direct sport, we won't, we won't use the verb jouer to play. We'll use the verb faire. So vous faites de la randonnée, for example, you go hiking au printemps in the spring. So we can use this for many different types of activities. We can use the verb faire. So we can see from our list here, there are a lot of different uh, opportunities to use faire. So it's a very useful verb. Again, whether a beginner or advanced French speaker, you are gonna use faire at every level. So now let's get to doing some practice together. So I have an exercise here, which I'm, which I'm sharing with you, uh, which I, I borrowed from the University of Texas at Austin's website to give all credit where credit is due. Um, so let's do this exercise together and see if we can choose the right answer. So we have a sentence and then we have to choose one of the two options to uh, answer and fill in the blank. So let's see if you can choose the right answer. So first one, we have for number one, Cory is speaking. He's one of the characters in these uh, exercises made by the University of Texas at Austin. So he says, je blank parce que mes vêtements sont sales. Okay, 
So parce que mes vêtements sont sales. So which, which do you think might be the right, uh, the right option to choose? Is it the first one, is it faire la lessive or faire la vaisselle? If we're talking about vêtements, what do you think would be the right option? So this one, vêtements are clothes. So we know that we're looking for the one that's the laundry. So was laundry la lessive or la vaisselle? It's la lessive, la lessive. So the right answer is je fais la lessive, okay, for numéro un. Now, next one for numéro deux, number two, we have Tammy blank, uh, parce que texte a faim. Okay, so are we going to choose fait la cuisine or fait le ménage? So we, with the expression avoir faim, meaning which we learned last week to be hungry. So what do you think is the right answer? Fait la cuisine or fait le ménage? It's la cuisine, right? She was going to cook because she's hungry and she doesn't need to clean the house right now. Okay, numéro trois, let's keep going. So au dessert, Cory et Jobab blank. Okay, so in the desert. Cory and Jobab is a fond de la planche à voile or fond des randonnées. So here we're talking about activities. Okay, so des randonnées, this one we, we looked at just in my example. So randonnée is hiking and planche à voile is going to be uh, windsurfing. So if it's in the desert, what do you think they're going to be doing? It's fond des randonnées. They're going to go hiking, right? You can't go windsurfing in the desert. Okay. Numéro quatre, let's keep going. Okay, quatre, so uh, Fiona says, Tammy, est-ce que tu blank à la bibliothèque? Okay, so what are you doing at the, at the library? Fais du ski or fais tes devoirs? What do you think is more likely at the bibliothèque, at the library? Not skiing, right? <laughs> Not the library. So tu fais tes devoirs, you do your homework, okay, your homework. All right, let's do a couple more and then we'll, we'll wrap this up, lesson up. So, numéro 5, Jobab says, nous rangeons notre chambre. Donc, nous. Okay, so if, they, if they're cleaning up their, uh, if we are cleaning up our room, we're tidying our room, do you think we're going to, uh, faisons du vélo to go biking or faisons, faisons le lit to make the bed? It's faisons le lit, right? Faisons le lit. We're going to make the bed. Okay. Numéro 6, uh, so Tammy cherche une nouvelle robe. Donc, elle fait du shopping ou fait du bateau? What do you think is more likely if she's looking for a new dress? Elle fait du shopping ou elle fait du bateau? C'est du shopping, right? She's going, she's going shopping, not, uh, not boating right now. She's looking for a new dress. Okay. Okay. Now, numéro 7, Edouard cherche des provisions. Donc, il, so he's looking for some supplies. So he fait le marché. Or fait de la voile. Is he going to go uh, sailing or go supermarket shopping? Il fait le marché. Right. Okay. We have three more remaining before we wrap up our lesson for today. So, numéro 8. Fiona ne peut pas voir clairement la tour parce qu'il... So, she can't see the tower very uh, clearly because il fait beau or il fait du brouillard. We have il fait beau. This one, most people are going to know what's beau. Beau means beautiful in French. So do you think she can see, not see the tower because it's nice out? No, it's the other one. It's fait de brouillard it's a, because it's a, there's a storm. There's like a windy windstorm. And so that's why she can't, see, she can't see the tower very clearly. Okay, two left. Numéro neuf. Cory met son maillot de bain parce qu'il... So Cory put on his bathing suit because... Il fait chaud or il fait mauvais? Il fait chaud, right? He puts on things because it's hot. All right. Last one we have for numéro 10. Okay. Edouard prend son parapluie parce qu'il... Okay. So parapluie, this is our key word uh, here to understand the meaning of this sentence. A parapluie is an umbrella. So what do you think? Which option? C'est frais or pleu? Frais, from our examples, was cool, to be cool, the temperature, and bleu is rain. So what do you think? What's the obvious choice? Il pleut, right? Because it's raining. That's why he's going to take his umbrella. Okay, très bien. So that about wraps up our lesson today on the verb faire. Again, we, we learned together the conjugations. Uh, je fais, tu fais, ils, elles, on fait, nous faisons, vous faites, 
Il Elfo. And we also learned a group of some different expressions and Fer has tons of them. So you definitely are gonna wanna get more practice to learn all, to start learning all these expressions and incorporate them in your daily conversation. Um, so please feel free to watch the video again to get more practice and also um, go to our website. We're going to be uploading very shortly some exercises to follow our live videos. So if you wanna get some extra practice, you can go to our website um, languages.com and to find some more work so that stuff will be posted shortly so please stay tuned and otherwise uh, tune in for our next community French video next Monday at 12 p.m. Uh, au revoir, merci.